How important is it? Aristotle said it's the aim and end of our existence. Furthermore, the meaning and purpose of life, so we pursue it. But are we doing it right? Well, the data says no, that we're collectively off base, consistently looking for happiness in the wrong place. More money, better job, purchasing a house, looking younger, having babies, maybe taking a spouse. And right now, you're probably saying, what kind of crap is this? Some of those things do sound like they bring happiness. Well, they would, so that's not totally wrong. They make you happy. Question is for how long? The answer, two words not vary. The reason, little more tricky, so listen carefully. See, all those things are what we call life circumstances. And when it comes to those, another two words to mention. Hedonic adaptation, referring to the human ability to quickly adapt to changes in life, no matter how significant, whether good or bad, that's a significant example. A study following lottery winners showed in less than a year they were no happier than the non-victors. Why? Because they got used to it. Not convinced? Well, let me prove it with another study. This one following patients with kidney disease. Ability for adaptation was so strong. Turned out they were just as happy as the control group who were completely healthy. Why? By now you know the answer. These plus other studies have shown that life circumstances are only responsible for 10% of our total happiness. So what's the rest? Well, 50% is simply not elected. We can't change it, mainly our genetics, leaving 40% left of the happiness pie. And here, my friends, is where the strategies lie. But right now, I need a little break from rapping, so we'll get to those. Don't worry, be happy. Talk to most people and you probably see a degree If life's a lock then be happy is the key So the key to happiness then's the key to life The key to all that The 40% slice of the happiness pie that we control Based on what we do and think If the goal's being happy Make no mistake takes a lot of drive But ultimately most important work we do in At our lives At the life. end of verse 1 I mentioned some happiness strategies These are all daily intentional activities Statistically proven to maximize happiness Based on data collected from following some of the happiest people on earth They all shared some behaviors which you'll see in this verse Twelve to be exact but don't worry your stress If that sounds like a lot just pick the ones that seem the best to you Like maybe one to four then implement them So grab a pen and a pad cause I'm about to mention number one Mainly expressing gratitude More than just saying thanks it's an attitude that needs to be cultivated consciously of being grateful for all the positive things in life. Write them down in a journal of gratitude. Three to five items per week and watch that happy mood. Move in with a quick motion, cause gratitude the antidote to negative emotions. And that's a proven fact, you see. And now time for number two of the strategy. Which is looking on the bright side, cultivating optimism, finding that silver lining. In all of life's gray clouds, the best possible selves diary the way how. Write down how you see your future ideally in one, five, or ten years, plus how to make that a reality. In the present tense, believe it or not, you just gave your optimism muscles in intense. Work out which promotes vitality, but now time for the third strategy. Not overthinking or making comparisons socially, both of these shown to promote negative emotions, these solutions are varied and many so while the share two here's the first one ready if you find yourself overthinking distract yourself read a book meet a friend in other words do something else to help take your mind off thinking in circles far as social comparisons well that's simple when you find that you're comparing yourself to your peers think of the bigger picture will this matter in a year will this matter when you're on your deathbed probably not take this perspective watch the comparison stop practicing acts of kindness number four not only good for the recipient but also so for the doer, pick one day per week, commit a big act of kindness, or three to five small ones. I'm sure you'll find this will bring happiness. Strategies for down, eight to go. We'll take a short break, then on with the show. Talk to most people, and you probably see they agree. If life's a lock, then being happy is the key. So the key to happiness, that's the key to life. The key to all that, the 40% slice of the happiness pie that we control based on what we do and think. If the goal's being happy, make no mistake, take a lot of drive, but ultimately most important work we do in our No lives. time for idle chatter, we still need to cover the remaining eight happiness strategies. Number five, nurturing social relationships. No matter if it's friend, fam, spouse, or who you're dating, it's imperative to happiness that these bonds are strong. Social support even proven to help you live long. 
So how do we achieve this? Set aside extra time every week to just be with the people that are important in your life, like friends, siblings, children, wife. But even if we do these things and are having a ball, still into every life a little rain must fall. Which is why we need a strategy to help us cope with life tragedies. Write about a painful experience for 15 minutes a day for an extended period, which will clear your head and make sense of the trauma, thus prevent intrusive thoughts about the drama. Maybe drama caused by an individual. Next strategy, learning forgiveness, and all that means is being willing to let go. Not necessarily to forgive or condone behavior. That's simply unacceptable. The key to this is to take an empathetic role and see things through the eyes of the accused. This will provide a more sympathetic view. Moving on to eight, increasing flow experiences. Flowing on the mic now when you're hearing this. But have no fear, it doesn't have to be so literal. Flow can refer to really anything at all that keeps you involved in the present moment, make you lose track of time like a watch that's been broken. Find an activity that fits the bill. Do it, repeat it, just that simple. Savoring the joys of life, number nine. This entails putting aside some moments of time, like two or three times a day. To focus on mundane events, normally swept away, maybe sipping a coffee. Free from distractions or having a hot bath, your body relaxing. From this fast-paced rat race that we face living on this globe. Next strategy, committing to goals. Regardless what those goals may be. From A to Z, building a cabinet or raising a family. So long as they're meaningful to you, pick a goal or two and put effort and passion in their pursuit. Second last, strategy has to be practicing religion and spirituality. Join a church, a mosque, a temple, a spiritual program, and attend, for example, like once a week. Or instead, read a book daily with your spiritual themes. Now, last but not least, the final happiness strategy. Taking care of your body, divide that into three. Physical activity, the first of the three. Exercise 30 minutes for most days of the week. Part two. No hesitation. Set aside time daily for meditation. And finally, part three seems self-evident. Act happy. Cause the evidence shows the benefits flow even if you're just pretending to go through the most as negative emotions. Can still get undone. And there you have it, 12 strategies done. Now make it a point to make them habit see, and you too can live forever after happily. Talk to most people that you probably see, they agree if life's a lock, then being happy's the key. So the key to happiness, that's the key to life. The key to all that, the 40% slice of the happiness pie that we control based on what we do and think. If the goal's being happy, make no mistake, takes a lot of drive, but ultimately most important work we do in our lives.